Hi again, this is Jeff, your protopi expert, answering your protopi questions. Today's question comes from Pablo. Pablo asks, how do I create an automatic character-by-character -character typed message effect followed by the cursor? You might have seen this effect before, and it's sometimes known as typewriter text. I'm going to show you how to do it. In my Pi here, I just have a few elements set up. I have a large text box, which is where our message will be typed out. I have a typewriter stroke sound effect to make it sound a little bit more like a typewriter as we do this. And I have a button, and we're going to use this to start our typing effect. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to have this start with just a blinking cursor in this empty box. This is not an input text field. Um, an input text field will automatically have a blinking cursor in it, but if we were to use an input text field, we, it would also bring up the keyboard when it's focused, and we don't want that. That would ruin our effect. So we're going to make a fake blinking cursor. I want this to happen when the scene starts, so I'm going to use a start trigger, and I'm going to use a text response. Text response on the text box, and I'm going to use the pipe character. That's the one above your return key on a lot of keyboards, and it's just the vertical bar. And I'm going to have this repeat. And you can re use the repeat down here. I'm going to have it repeat actually indefinitely. And I'm going to have it repeat every second. And then I'm going to use another text response to remove that pipe character. So text in my text box. And you would have, uh, you would have seen in other videos I've done, when you want to have empty text in a text field, you have to use a formula for this. And empty text is represented by two quotes with nothing in between. And then I want to repeat this again, but I want this to happen on the half second. So the pipe character is being written every second, and I want to have that removed every half second. So I'm going to delay this by 0.5 seconds, and then repeat this again indefinitely, and have it repeat every second. So what this will do, this one will write the pipe character to our text field every second, so 0, 1, to etc. And then this one will remove that pipe character every half second. So 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, etc. Let's see how that works. Okay, there we go. We have the blinking cursor effect going on in here. Now let's start working on our typing effect. I'm going to use a bunch of variables in here. Uh, the first variable I'm going to use will be the text I want to type. So you can create a variable by tapping the variables panel in the bottom left here. And then you click the plus. And I'm going to say for this scene. You only have one scene, so it doesn't really matter which you use, but I'm going to say for this scene. And I'm going to call this variable text to type. And this will be the message that we want typed. So very important that you change this to a text type of variable. And we can type in this box right below it exactly what we want to type. And this will be, this is the text to be typed. Then I'm also going to create a variable for a counter. And this will become a little bit more obvious in a second when I start using it. But what I want to do is I want to count up from zero zero to the number of characters that are in my text to type variable. And every time that counter increases by one, we're going to write uh, a character to our box. So we can do it one at a time like a typewriter. So we're going to create a variable for this scene. We're going to call this counter. This will be a number type because we're counting one, two, three, four, etc. And we're going to default it to zero. And then what I want to do is when I tap the type button, I want to start increasing that counter by one. So let's do that. I'm going to add a tap trigger to my type button. And I'm going to assign a new value to my counter variable. And what I want to do is I'm going to use a formula here. And my formula is counter plus one. What this is doing is this is taking whatever the current value of counter is. Right now it's zero. It's going to add one to it. That'll make one. And then it's going to write that sum back to our counter variable, essentially updating the value of counter. I'm going to say OK. And then I want this to repeat. Now, how many times do I want this to repeat? We could put in a number here, and we could count the number of characters that are in here and put that number that's in there. But there's a smarter way. What we're going to do is use a built-in function in Protopy. And if we go over to Protopy's website, um, you can find all of the built-in functions. If you go to the Learn tab on Protopy's website and go to Documentation, you'll end up on this screen. And if you look down at the left menu here under Formulas, you will see Functions here. 
we are going to use the length function to count the number of characters that are in our text to type variable. So let's go back here. And in here, instead of putting in an explicit number, I'm going to use a formula. Let's remove this and I'm going to say length of text to type. And once you start typing, it's going to recognize that there is a variable that starts with the word text. And I'm just going to click that and finish the, the function with the closing bracket. I can say OK to that. Oops, I didn't say OK to that. I clicked off. Very important that you tap, uh, click the OK button. If you just click off, sometimes the formula is not taken. So we want length, text to type. Click OK. There we go. And then the interval, this is how, how much time to wait between it, each repeat. Uh, so right now it's at 0 0.2 seconds. Let's leave it there for now. We can adjust this later if it seems a bit too slow or a bit too fast. Okay, so if I preview this right now, if I hit the type button, you're going to think nothing's happening. And we have nothing to show us that anything is working at all. But trust me when I say this, that the variable is increasing behind the scenes. And you can actually see that in action. If you go to your variables in the bottom left and you hover over the counter variable, you're going to see this ladybug icon on the right end of it. If you click that, you're going to get this green box, which will give us the value of our variable at any point in time. And we should be able to see that value increasing when we hit the the type button. So let's try that. Type. Okay, and we see it increasing, and we should see it stop when it reaches the end. Okay, there we go. There are 29 characters in there, and it stopped at 29. Great. So now how do we use that? We can add a detect trigger. And what it's going to do is detect every single time the value of counter changes, and it's going to fire. So I'm going to say detect counter. And I want to do something with that. And I'm going to write some text to my text box. And we want this to be the number, uh, we want this to be the number of characters from the left end of my text type variable, and that is the counter value. So if my counter is five, then I want the first five characters. If my counter is ten, I want the first ten characters, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Protopy has another function built in called the left function, which will give us exactly the number of characters from the left end of our text that we specify. So our source will be our text to type variable, and the number of characters will be the value of counter at any one point in time. So let's go back here, and I'm going to use a formula. I'm going to use the left function. My source text is text to type. And the number of characters is whatever the value of counter happens to be. This should give us our typewriter effect. OK, we have a blinking thing going on. And you'll notice that once it stopped typing, our cursor comes back and it's blank. What we need to do is when our typing effect is happening, we actually want to stop this blinking cursor. So we can add that into our tap. So when we tap to start the counter increasing, let's do a stop on the text box. And that will be however the text box is currently animating, it will stop. So let's stop and I'm going to re rename this blinking cursor. So now if I preview this and I hit the type button, Okay, this is giving us our typing effect. It's a little bit slow, so we can change the speed in our assign trigger over here. Remember how I said that we can change this, and let's do it every 0.1 second. So every one-tenth of a second, we're going to type a character. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Now we still want the cursor tacked on to the end of this. So in my text response over here, I'm going to change my formula to add the pipe character onto the end. So whenever you want to join text, you use the plus. And then when you want to use literal text, you've got to enclose it in quotes. So quote, and then pipe, and then close quotes. What this will do is whatever this happens to be, it will tack on the pipe character, character to the end of it. Now when I preview this, there we go. We have that pipe character on the end. And now the last thing we want to do is we want to start that blinking cursor again. 
All right. So how do we do that? In our detect, this fires every single time our value of counter changes. We can detect when we've reached the end of our counting. So let's add a condition. And if our value of counter equals, and I'm going to use a formula here, and again, I'm going to use the length. Remember, we use the length function here to determine the number of characters. I'm going to copy that and use it again. So when our value of counter equals the length of the number of characters in our text to type variable, I want to do something. And I'm going to say done typing. Now I want to start my blinking cursor again. Now you might think I could just take these and copy them and put them here. But we're going to see what happens when we do that. This is the text to be typed. Okay, and my blinking cursor does come back, but it's also cleared out my text here. I have to make a little bit of a modification. So instead of just the pipe character, what I want to say is take the value of text to type and tack on the pipe character on the end of it. So I'm going to change this to a formula. And I'm going to say text to type plus, remember this is how we join text, quote, pipe quote. And in my removal of the pipe character, I don't want empty text. I just want text to type. So I'm going to make this a formula again, text to type without the pipe character. Let's see how that looks. This is the text to be typed. And there, I have the blinking cursor again. Fantastic. Now what happens when I tap this again? All right, it stopped. My counter went up. If you notice again, if I hit type again, look at the value of counter. It's now increasing. We want it to reset back to zero and do this all over again. We haven't told it to do that. So when we tap this, what we'd like to do is reset our counter to zero. So I'm going to add a reset response in here. And I'm going to reset the variable. You can use resets on variables in a similar way that you can use resets on objects on your stage. In this case, it will stop or it will reset the value back to whatever the default was. So our default is zero. It's going to reset it back to, to zero. Let's preview this. And I'm going to type. This is the text to type or to be typed. And if I click it again, it reset it to zero. But you'll notice we have a small problem. Our cursor is not blinking. And we're also not getting the very last character in our type, which was a period character. If we take a look at the text to type variable, so let's close this. This is the text to be type has a period on the end. And if I turn off this reset just temporarily, you're going to see that it types all the way to the end. This is the text to be typed with the period. And my cursor starts to blink. The counter is going to 29. Keep note of that number. Now let's turn our reset back on. When I hit the type on here, this is the text to be typed. Our counter is only going to 28. Why is that happening? So the problem that we have here is we're calling the assign of counter plus one and our reset at the same time. So when I click tap, it's going to take the value of counter assign it counter plus one, which will make it one. And then it's also calling this reset, which is going to set it back to zero. So when this detect happens, the first number that should be detected is one, but instead it's detecting zero. And because we've kind of made this one minus, whatever the length of our text to type is, it's going to count to one minus that. In order to get around this, we should change the order in which things happen. Now you might think I can just drag my assign down so it happens afterwards. But that's not how this is governed. The way Protopy works is it uses the timeline. So my reset happens immediately. It's not delayed at all. And my assign happens immediately, not reset at all. What I want to do is I'm just going to delay the start delay by, say, 0 0.1 seconds. 0 .1 seconds. Actually, let's do it by, uh, by 1 second so we can see this. We can see this happen. We'll make it shorter again. But when I, when I preview this and I do the type, you see it took a second before it started. 
but then it goes to the end, types my character, my period character, and it does the blinking cursor. And if I tap type again, there we go, set it to zero, which cleared it, and it worked again. Let's re reduce that delay on this. It doesn't need to be half a second. Let's just make it 0 0.1. It just has to happen after our reset. So if a reset happens at zero, we're going to delay the first assign by 0 0.1 seconds. So this should seem fairly immediate. When I click type, this is the text to be typed. There we go. And if I click type again, it does it all over again. All right, great. Let's add our sound effect. Anytime I write the text to my text field, I want to play that sound effect. So let's add a playback response. Playback. I'm going to select layer of this typewriter stroke. And we'll just do play sound effects. Now let's preview this. Okay, another problem. It happened the first time, but didn't happen again. Now if I reset this, And that was it. So this is a problem that I actually addressed in the very first Ask Protopie video that I did. And whenever you play a sound effect, if you want that to repeat, you need to reset it. What's happening within Protopie is that the sound effect is being played from wherever its current spot is. And when you first start, that current spot is the beginning. It plays through to the end and the playhead stops and stays at the end of that sound effect for for the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the scene, unless you do something to reset it. So what I'd like to do is, let's reset our sound effect, our typewriter stroke, and what that will do is it will put it back to the start. So now when we preview this, there we go. And we have our typewriter sound effect, and if I click it again, it should start all over it. Now the super awesome thing about how we've set this up is let's say you change your mind and you wanted a different message to be displayed in this box. All you have to do is modify this variable. This is the, type, the text we typed and here is some more text. Let's make sure I didn't add too many spaces here because it looked look weird. Okay, let's preview that. This is the text we typed. Okay, now why did that work? It worked because we used we used the length function in our formula when we started the counter. So it's always going to count the length of the number of characters in that variable. If we had put in a specific number of characters, if we had to just put in the number 29 in here, all right, and if I preview that, it's only going to give us the first 29 characters. And if you recall, that was what we had before. And then if I change this to, say, 35, and I preview this, it's going to give us the first 35 characters. Right? But what we want is the entire length of whatever happens to be in this variable, which is why. And let's use the just, I will use undo twice. This is why I use the length function in here. That makes this more dynamic. Whatever I change this to, it's going to change whatever this value happens to be. There we go. All right, let's make one small change here. There you go. Easy as pie. Oh, not east as pie. Easy as pie. And there you go. Easy as pie typewriter effect. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, just check out the link in the description below. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.